It's me. And it's me. It's 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 you. Oh, Ooh. it's just you guys again. Dang it. Yeah. It, it's just Dang. us. Welcome. My hair's down. We had a parade yesterday. So I know. I, I was shocked, man. I, I didn't feel like putting it up. I wanted to wear a hat today. Yeah. So I'm wearing a hat. Let me intro Jared Poland. Frono's photo dot com and welcome to Raw Talk. This is episode number two thirty eight. We got a busy, busy show, oh, yeah. and I want to welcome first, let's welcome everybody here who's watching live. Thank you for watching live if you're watching live on the YouTubes. If you've got flying solo questions, Todd is going to be monitoring those. We will go over those at, in segment, whatever we call it, segment four, <laughs> Coming five, up. Yeah. six, segment something, and Todd will pull some of those just in case they're not around later to get it answered. But go ahead and do that, and while you're at it, let us know in the live chat where you're watching from, and let us know what you think so far of, like... The show in the past, not like this show. And, and based on the title, we'll, we'll, we're going to go into that title. Big discussion. It is. It's why photographers hate Peter Lick. We're going to go into that. That's at the end of Photo News. That's going to be a big discussion. Um, but stick I think... Stick around for that. Yeah, definitely stick around. Yeah, what Todd said. Stick around for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice shirt, Stephen. Thank you. Where'd you get that? Uh, the shirt store. Boss 1995. <laughs> Where'd you get yours? Where'd my, I got it at um, Small Shirts or Us. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Baby, Baby Gap. Baby Gap. Cardi B. Exactly. That's okay. what we're starting off with. So segment one, that's what my notes say. Segment one. Here's what we're talking about. The discussion. Oh, wait. Title. <laughs> Jared, you suck at reading your notes. Let's talk about the iMac Pro. The iMac Pro was delivered late on Monday afternoon. So excited. It was about 4 o'clock, right as we started to record videos. I got a phone call from the FedEx guy and said, I've got your stuff. Well, you also literally waited at home all day for the delivery, and then you came in because it was so late at that point. It was like Christmas Eve. Literally right when we were about to record. (laughs) You were only here for like 10 minutes. They called, and they were already at your house. Yeah, and I said, dude. Okay, I'll meet you there in 10 minutes. He's like, yep, I'll go make two other deliveries, which is nice. That's awesome. That he does that because yeah. so, I had to sign for it. They definitely it. don't have to do that, but it's awesome So we brought it in. Stephen made me wait until the next day to do the unboxing and sniff test filming. We did all of that. Then I went to lunch. While I'm at lunch, I get a phone call from Stephen, who's setting it up, going, we have an issue. Yeah. So tell us what happened. Uh, I mean, not much to it. I literally went to do the setup menu, the normal, like, welcome to the Mac and blah, blah, blah. Type in all my credentials, make a log on. It, it keeps flickering as I'm doing this. You know, English, language, whatever. Flicker, flicker, flicker. The screen's just flicking black. And then all of a sudden, it loads up, and I'm like, okay, cool. And then it's still flickering on the desktop. I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, maybe it's just doing some background updating or something like that. I've never personally owned an iMac Pro, obviously. Um, and then all of a sudden, Nobody boom, has their new. Screen goes fully black. And then I realize, I'm looking at the screen, the right side of the screen is super pixelated. Yeah. There's a ton of little green and red pixels, and it looks like it basically got, it basically got dropped. And I don't know if it was in shipping. I don't know if it was just coming from China. I don't know who did it. China. Was there any water damage? Not from Steven. He didn't touch it. Is that what you were getting at? I didn't say that. I was just, anyway, I mean, I so, was so what happens so next? DOA, yeah. While I was at lunch, Dan was on the phone with uh, Apple Care because... It, well, even well, Dan if I, and I are freaking out the whole time, like, oh, God, <laughs> what's going to happen? Jared's going to freak out, think we broke it. They called me at lunch. Jared's going to slaughter us all. And he was like complete opposite, like, oh, that sucks, but all right, we'll call him. I'm, I'm like, like, I'm like we'll, make, we'll make a video about it. Um, so Dan got on the phone with the uh, Apple Care Apple Care people, and what I was going to say is, even if we didn't have Apple Care, they were going to take care of, of course. it no matter what. So I called the Apple Store where... I ordered it from because you. I deal with the business side. You can. They have business people that help you buy the stuff. And I called them, and they were going to start the process to figure out what to do. And initially, the first responses I was getting was, "Well, you could order another one and get in line to get another one." And it, right now, the dates are like March sixth or seventh, basically a um, month from now. Yeah. Right. So that's way that you would get back in line. And I'm and I just sat there. and I'm like, we already waited six there's weeks. There's no way that I should have to get in the back of the line because this is a faulty, there's an issue. And when I made the video that my $8,000 iMac Pro is DOA, I made sure to make it clear that this could have been a shipping issue, we don't know this could be was, an yeah. Apple issue, but Apple has been great to work with so far because they are they jump through hoops to make sure stuff gets done. Especially when it's an $8,000 computer. And, and they were on the ball, and they were being very... They were 
call me on the phone, not forth, just doing it sure. through email, yeah. um, trying to find a solution. And so yesterday was the parade, which we'll talk about in a minute. So this store was closed, but they were still working on things. And this morning I was going to, they, they told me how, how, ex, how I've been very uh, patient with them and I didn't flip out and I've been very nice to work with. And Again, I'm like, are they still well, talking shocked. to Dan or they were actually talking to you? I'm like, it wasn't. No, they're talking to me. Oh. And, and, I'm like, and well, meanwhile, you emailed Tim Cook, by the way. Well, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, I wasn't. I know it's not their fault. Yeah, they're just they're help. They're here to help me. They're not here to. They they Screw didn't ship over. it. They mm-hmm. didn't make any problems. And I told them, I'm like, I, I might as well just email Tim Cook, not in a bad way, be, but his email. We know it's available. Uh, it's out there for stuff like this. So I I emailed him, put the link in showing the issue that we had. And as you know, the video that we made was not a bad video towards Apple. Now, of course, it wouldn't make them happy to see an issue, but... Yeah, it's definitely not a positive but message. It, but it's prob- I, I still think it was a shipping issue. But nonetheless... It's got to be. Oh, and yeah. I did make... For anybody who didn't know, I did have FedEx take a note of the box because there was a slight tear in the box. You but never know. What shocks me is just the amount of packaging. Literally, it's like 20 pounds of cardboard. But if they drop it... Tw- cardboard. They drop it 10 pounds. That's the issue. That's is that 10, if they drop feet. it 10 feet, it's still going to mess up yeah. internally. Yeah. It's got to be some internal And those moving. boxes are very nondescript when you get those things. Oh, you know it's an like iMac. When I got my... It's clearly well, I, I mean, but it's like... I don't know. It's like... It doesn't say like fragile electronics from no, Apple. No, but the it, shape of the box... Yeah, it's, it's definitely an iMac. And that it yeah. says Apple on it. It actually has like the serial number and everything on the side of the box. Yeah, on the uh, outside. On the, on the outside. Box. But so, so I emailed Tim Cook. I was going to be very upset today. He responded, right? Hashtag, well, do you know who I am? <laughs> he didn't. I, I came in today ready to blow a gasket if I didn't get resolution to to it today. Yeah, that's weird. Like, no, <laughs> not so blow a gasket. But crazy. That's so calm weird. usually. First off. Anyway, they called me first thing in the morning. Not first thing, like second thing in the morning. Uh, yeah, please, we hold, please hold for Tim Cook. No. We have a tracking <laughs> number. It says it will be here Wednesday at your location. Like, great. Wow. Thank you. And wow. like, it's the same computer, same com- She's like, yes. Then after I get off the phone with her, I get a call. It's Apple. <laughs> it's an executive. Uh, your, your message came across Tim Cook's email. Uh, we're calling you in regards to this. We want to let you know that we're going to make sure that this is taken care of. I let him know the tracking number. They actually did a great job. I have the tracking number. And he's like, great. I see that that's in the works. And if there's anything you need, let me know. Keep my information. And they, come on, what companies do that? Yeah. And, and they, w- they would do that if you bought the cheapest item. I guarantee you, if you had an issue, they would try to make it right. Um, so I'm but- surprised they didn't make you troubleshoot the issue. Like I feel like they asked... No questions about what's going wrong with the iMac, at least that I was aware of. Uh, based off of the video we sent them. Oh, you did send them. I didn't even know you sent well, them. Sent you video. sent the video? The video you shot yeah. of the issue. Literally half the screen, pixels. and They saw that, and they and probably knew what was up. Now, now I, can I say something, though? Yep. Before anybody in the comments starts this, which you may have already done, Mac versus PC, why would you spend oh, $8,000 sure. on a thing? It's not your money. It's not your problem. Get over it. If you don't want to use a Mac, don't use it. And if you want to bitch about pricing... Don't do it to me. How's that? That's no. fine. That's fine. Comments um, are pretty, pretty, they don't care about that. Yep, yep. Yeah, they don't care about that. Now, <laughs> we did hook it up to our BenQ 31-inch monitors, which we love, uh, via USB-C to DisplayPort, and it does work. It works fine, so it's clearly either a video card or a hardware issue with a monitor or yeah. it was cable. I don't know what it is. Could be a is. cable. But and I think the internal... You can't, you can't get in there to double check, so... No. Yeah. I think the actual computer itself is is fine. It's just the actual screen that's. Look for this iMac up. Pro coming to a refurb store near you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what I will say though is you should I'd sign it like inside, really small, <laughs> so if somebody finds it. I've never seen the 5K iMac in person. Yeah, the display, mm. and <laughs> even on our compromise display when we had it on on and it, it wasn't beautiful. flickering when it flickered, like, when it flickered on when it flickered it was good on. now the, the biggest issue like, this is gorgeous <laughs> the, the biggest issue though is that it wasn't just flickering it would flicker to the point where it just went all black but yeah yeah and then you couldn't even get to yeah. see what you were looking at it's so definitely a loose connection i think yeah the, the moral of the story there's one being shipped hopefully it comes in one piece yeah it, and hopefully crossed. it comes in peace and we can work but it all worked out in That's the exciting. end, hopefully. I can't hopefully. wait for Steven to get his hands on it. I didn't buy the water protection. Dang it. 
No, I, so I, I, yes, that's great. So how are we doing in the live room, Todd? Any anything going on? Looks if you want to, we got about five hundred watching right now. Oh, Thank cool. you guys. Very good. cool. Um, everybody's checking in. So, hello from Slo- Slovenia, San Pedro, uh, Morocco, Munich, Germany. Stevens people. Um, <laughs> you know. All right. UK. <laughs> Sounds Hi, guys. good. Thank you, guys. So if you hey, if you if you're listening at home and you're not watching it live, Fridays 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. Tune in to catch the live feed so you can interact with us. But maybe if not, 3 10 p.m. Sometimes. What was that? I said maybe 3 10 p.m. Maybe. Uh, it was actually 3:07. I saw on the clock. Mm-hmm. The clock right there. Same thing. Uh, you can um, subscribe to the podcast wherever podcasts are available: Stitcher, iTunes. Uh, Google Play, and you can check out all the audio that we do. So you want to move on to the next thing? Yeah, let's do it. You want to move on to the uh, Eagles Parade? Sorry. Eagles. O- o- Eagles Parade. The, the Eagles. The, the Eagles. Go wah, Eagles! Wah. They, brought, they brought home the, the, the trophy, and I'm going to go to Wawa and get myself a hoogie. I was so excited that we won. So Thank you. the only reason I went to the parade personally is because... We had an idea for a shoot. Yes. Uh, and that was the plan. It's crashing. What's, what, what are we looking at? It's crashing? Yep. It was crashing.org. Anyway, the video likes to crash on us, so... Todd, do you know where it is? I think I got it. Well, let's see if we can get it up. If not, if you can't get it up, it's probably a normal occurrence for Todd Yeah, anyway. I mean, my wife will tell you. It's, uh, it is what it is. There so this go. is some of the footage that Steven shot out at the parade. The idea was... <sighs> it looks like it's crashing. Nope. So just skip it, Todd. Yep. The, the idea with the parade was to go out and do portraits of Eagle fans and get their reactions to the Eagles winning, and that was the idea. All about the fans. Uh, if you listen to the Daily Fro, which I've been doing every night, you can hear my take on what happened last night and also on the day before leading up to the parade and what the idea and the plan was to go out there. Um, but if we can get the photos back up, we can show you some of the photos that we're going. Yep. Just skip the video because we probably shouldn't be putting 4K into that machine. Well, no, but it's 4K, but then it's trimming it back down. It should be able to handle it. We probably should have exported it before. It's recompressing it, though, internally. What is recompressing? The computer? The computer. PowerPoint compresses it. Yeah. And we, it, was, it was working. PowerPoint I'll try, uh, sucks. It's anyway. just we have this PowerPoint loaded here's up with slides. So here's one of them. So the idea was to go around, and I have no problem asking people to take their pictures. And I don't think... I think one person out of the many, many that I asked yesterday basically said no. They didn't want. Oh, I didn't know anyone said no. no. What was that, Todd? He said, "Go peep yourself." No, but so the idea here is we're going to put together a photo story, and we'll see how it turns out. I am not fully happy with what I was able to get. Todd, you can go to the next one. Uh, I didn't get as many as I would have liked, and I think a lot of what I ran. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is this guy's back. This guy was a nutter. You can see uh, Big Dick Nick is a term that a lot of people have been throwing around for Nick Foles. This kid was hammered out of his mind, too. I interviewed him. Yes. I have his audio. Oh, you, can yeah. sh- you can show his face. Do, oh, did we show his picture? No, we didn't well, show I his have, face. I have video of it. I could try again, but it might crash. Yeah, don't worry about the video. We'll, we'll do that later. So keep going, Todd. Let's see another one. I believe uh, that's a photo. Yep. Yeah, so this guy was cool. So he the was idea awesome. was to, to ask these guys, what do the Eggles mean to them? And then get their answer. And then we're going to come up with some kind of photo story to go with it. What, what did you think of the day? Uh, very tough. Very tough to shoot because there was drunk a-holes running around and it was madness i mean we were literally like sardines at one point where we couldn't even move around the crowd i'm trying to get nice smooth footage and you know people are hitting me and bumping into me and so it was very tough especially for you because you mainly shot with a 105 millimeter lens Because i wanted this look so you had to be way more out in the open i wanted this look. i wanted a portrait which was hard to look. find i got what I you wanted meant. how they wanted face. headshots yeah and i took the 35 one four but it's not about their clothes. It's about their face and the ruggedness. Sure. Some and of I, them, though, I think it was about the clothes. Some of them, I, mean, I could have stepped back, and, but you got some video of it. I would have liked to have shot 100 people, you know, but I, I literally could have stopped everybody. But the problem is everybody looked very similar. Ah, there was a lot that I was trying to get you to shoot that. You were like, meh. Meh. But the, the cool thing is that we did get you to literally, like, interview each person. So we have audio of them. Oh, and this one you specifically want to talk about yeah, real quick, too. But there's audio of them, and we tried to get, like, you know, how do you feel about the Eagles winning the Super Bowl? Are you a diehard Eagles fan? And what get do the Eagles mean to you? Heartfelt responses. And it means more than my wife and children. 
<laughs> <laughs> and you basically had the guys that were super drunk, like bros, and then you had the dad that just is a passionate fan with his son, and you know they were there together. And so I heard somebody cool. dumped ashes on the parade route, like their dad had passed away. Who yeah, was a I big saw that fan. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Yep. Oh no. He was probably a diehard fan. So yeah. the the they said. I asked my dad about estimates. If he saw any estimates, yeah, somewhere around three point two million. They don't wow. know. It didn't seem super packed, but the well, where we where we were, you got to understand the parade route was five miles yeah. long. It stretched out the so entire. There was street. a ton of space to stretch out. It wasn't just downtown. So if they think three, I mean, there was a ton, when we were leaving and going down the side street, going down Spring Garden, it was just. Droves of people just walking. But the cool thing is that this is not going to be a video just about, you know, you shooting or, or vlogging or something like that. Again, it's more focused on the fans, the city, and, and all of that. Did yeah. you actually talk about the reflection no. for this? I have, tr I have to remember with images like this to... Focus on the forehead focus or some, I always say or, focus on the eyes because the eyes are the most important. But every time I focus on the sunglasses, it now focuses on me shooting the picture in the reflection. Well, that's Which would all be that matters cool. anyways. If, like, the whole crowd was behind you, but in this picture, it's just you in an empty street, pretty much. So I guess the lips could be a good place to focus. It's tough, yeah. Or the center of the eye, Frank. maybe right between. Because you're shooting at, what, like, 2.5? Two 2.5. Five? Two five. So you're pretty uh, shallow. 2.8, two 2.5, two 2.8. Two um, so if you're just a little off, the whole picture's off. Yeah, I wouldn't, have gone to the, I wouldn't have gone to the parade. After going to the parade, I really didn't enjoy the parade because it's not a <laughs> parade. It was outside. You just wait. No, it's just you wait hours upon hours and hours for a... For well, the what buses shocked to me go by, and then it's over. Is that everyone was there just for the parade and the buses to go by? No one really stayed for the ceremony, unless you were down at the art museum yeah. itself. People just peaced out, and I'm like, that ceremony is the whole reason. They just wanted to catch a glimpse of the guys. Yeah, I think, yeah, at the end of but the, the speech, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The G if you want to hear a really good were, speech, but there were also homeless families out there. I see you have a picture of this homeless <laughs> family that was out. Dan was there as well. Out there, it was his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> he was there with his kid, little Dan, his wife, Anna, and uh, they were there, definitely having his, a good time. Uh, here, there's his liquor in that bottle. <laughs> Sipping on some scissor. Milk and coffee. <laughs> and then Dan also had a nice panorama of uh, the crowd, his view. And this is, this is some of the video I wanted to show, but Dan's got a good, nice still of it. <laughs> They're showing were, how packed it was. The people in the trees. People on top of porto potties. People climbing the trash top trucks. of the trash trucks and yeah. the cops. I didn't see as many cops as I expected. No, man. Uh, so I think I they were more I mean, on the parade route You're going to be outnumbered itself. regardless. That's true. That they, were, they were on the parade route. And they didn't even Definitely try to tell numbered. people to get off the top yeah. of the, uh, no. the trash trucks or they the did, roof of that building. They prevented people from climbing up, like adding more people, but they didn't try and get them down. And the yeah. trash truck drivers were just sitting in the truck. I know. Smoking. <laughs> and honking every once in a while. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's but great. It, was, it was a fun day. I think we will be able to piece something really cool together. Uh, it could be a quick video. It could be a 10-minute video. We really don't know. Um, we thoroughly planned it out, but again, it's just so chaotic shooting an event like that. Yeah. Because it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Chaos. It's yeah. a once-in-a-lifetime. You, ha you had to go do it. You had to go do it and try it. Yeah. And uh, I think hopefully, knock on wood, we uh, Next pulled year. it off. Next year, we'll try again. <sighs> anyway, you want to talk about your photo? <laughs> yeah. So I also, the week... Actually, the day after Raw Talk, last week, I went into Philly and shot my own picture of... Well, that's not in Philly. Well, this is actually in Camden of Philly. <laughs> Did you get murdered? Did skyline. you get robbed? Are you, are you actually a ghost right are now? Are you still alive? This was basically a last minute thing. I was, every day I would come over the bridge and I would see everything lit up. The bridge, the skyline, everything was green. And I'm like, all right, this is a once in a lifetime thing this that's week. That's great, man. It's going to not be green anymore. So Saturday, I got my camera gear together, went over to Camden, the waterfront, and by myself... Terrible area, <laughs> and shot a bunch of stills. It was hey man, freezing out too. Well, you got your hand there, that camera. So this is one of them. I was debating on what type of image I was going to get. Am I am I going to go super wide, tight on just the skyline? So I got this one. And what annoyed me, Todd, if you want to go to the next one, yeah, is I made this image up as well because these images were going around like super viral, and they're fake. People were just making right. the entire city green as if yeah. this is what it actually looks like, and it doesn't. So yeah. I did it just to see if people would react. But, but it's more exciting. Yeah, it's more exciting, yeah. I guess. But this is actually more realistic of what that it looks cool. like. I mean, Do you have any of the other ones great. in there? But my favorite image is the panorama that I shot, which is coming up. This one is my favorite image. And this was more of a zoomed in. I actually didn't love it at first when I shot it. It's a 50 millimeter shot mm. of basically the bridge. I love the leading lines from the bridge mm -hmm. to the city, to the skyline. Yeah. And it's a more of like a three to one aspect ratio. I had to obviously crop it. But Todd, if you go to the next one, this is the raw file. 
I mean, oh, wow. there's a lot of stuff well, done you, to it. Th- this is the cropped raw file. If of course, all I did was all I did was cropped at Panorama. I know, but if you show the non-crop, it looks terrible. The photo. Well, it's just uncropped. It's a great photo, as we know, as it turned out to be. Um, the processing brings it to life. Oh, you have to do yeah, a lot of processing great, for night Process. photography, especially to bring out the sky, uh, the water. Now, I did do about a 20-second exposure to get more ripples and more of, a, more of like a smooth look in the water. I mean, we might as well call you Peter Lick. To get the reflection. I mean, all that green. I mean, this is actually a giant really composite. Good. I forgot to tell you. That bridge is fake. I just kind of put it in there. Mm-hmm. No, but... Uh, uh, I was trying to get a nice flow of the water, but it just there wasn't that much wind, mm-hmm. so yeah. it still kind of looks like it wasn't a long exposure, but it was, and I think it came out really well. I actually got a Adorama Pix giant metal print, forty by twenty inches of it. It hasn't come in yet, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, nice. It's really nice, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, I'm gonna steal definitely one of my favorites. I'm gonna put that in my uh, my Facebook. Uh profile somewhere oh you need to do a share it so is that it that's what you have to say about yeah, that? yeah that's what i have to say about that i'm hoping to go back this week and try and get the art museum if it's still lit up green and boathouse row and a, a bunch of other places around philly um, you can come to my house my lights are flashing green i'd out go in front of my house yeah if you want to come boathouse row let's do it the boathouse row i think is gonna be look really cool with the reflection mm. because everything's lit up green and you see the green reflecting and it's way more reflection than the actual bridge in this photo we'll see if it's still up yeah uh, moving on to the next part of the topic, Todd was in L.A. Yes, he was. Oh, yeah. Can you fill us in on your L.A. experience? Well, I had to go out for Adult Land again. It was um, meeting with the lead actress this time. So we talked before about I went out a, maybe a month ago to meet with or before or before the new year to go meet with an actor. That actor um, has agreed to be the lead and Ooh. we got to paper that up. I'll let you know more when I when I can let you know more. And I met with a lead actress, um, and she loves the script. So it sounds like we put an offer out to her yesterday. And I'll let you know more when I can. Twenty four ninety five. You could follow Adult Land Movie on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll probably announce it there. But um, what I want to know, Todd, is how was, was your good. ride home? How was your flight? Oh, home? it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, so I hear. So first off, I I, I go to um uh. I go on Virgin Air, American, Virgin American, which made me feel like high school. No, no, Vir- oh, yeah, Virgin American. Yeah. Sold so it's Virgin Alaska. American, and then, uh, and I'm like, well, who are these people at this desk with, like, leather jackets? I'm like, is there something wrong here? But apparently that's their, that's their MO. Then I get on, and, and it feels like a Puff Daddy video. It's purple. Yeah, yeah. Like, purple and pink and all this Black nonsense. Seats. And I'm like, all right, there's music it. playing. Purple? I'm like, all right, whatever. Okay. And I finally sit down, and I'm like, all right, I'm so tired. It's, I'm exhausted. It's a red eye. I'm going like, to sleep. I know i got to get up for a raw talk tomorrow. I end up in, in right directly in front of Barb Kensington <laughs> and her son, as well as their dog. Rob Kensington? Bobby Kensington. Is he the one with the mullet? <laughs> so anyways, you sit down there, and you can touch the screen and order your food, and they're just, as soon as I sit down... Just touch it. Just touch it. Order whatever you want. Just touch it. And this goes on for four hours about touching it. And then they had their dog. And she's like, Bobby, are you going to be able to sleep? I, w- I almost turned around and be like, no, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was, uh, it was tough. But... Did she smoke on the plane? Oh, I mean, I, I, I got a nicotine high just standing next to the fumes brought from her body and i mean she was leather face and she was but she uh, she was special did she say anything about smoking lighting up no well (laughs) she's probably like uh hey so they only have the cigarette light there so the vape is cool bobby we're cool on the vape we're fine on that uh ma'am you can't vape it's not nicotine it's weed so it's fine (laughs) no ma'am you can't have that no i actually lied i'm sorry it's meth so it should be fine. It's medical meth. <laughs> but anyway. And that's your trip. That was my trip. Sounds it went like a well. lovely trip. Very, very, uh, very successful. It went very well. We put an offer out to the girl. And um, she, uh, it's an actress that is, I won't say too much, but it's an actress who is in a Oscar-nominated film. Ooh. It's Oscar Currently, nominated. right now. Like, one of the films that's nominated... She's in that. I mean, that's like a one in ten shot, right? Are they back to ten? 10 well, movies? it could it could literally be whoever got like uh, best toenail polish oh. yes. in a movie. So you know, it could be anybody. So Goes to Todd. Wolf. That's all I got. All right, so cool, there's man. that. 
Thank that's, you. That's the end of the intro. Super long, long intro. intro. Why don't we get to a pluggy McPluggerson, Todd? You want to hit the button? Whatever wait, it wait, is, wait, it wait, is. Wait, wait, wait. This episode is brought to you by the Frono's Photo Guides to Guides. Z- Z- Go to fronosphoto.com <laughs> slash guides to get a free preview of all four of the guides. Z- right? Z- meow. Well, somebody asked in the comments, can I do more videos, how to show people how to shoot video? Right there. Boom. Feed more. Right there. <laughs> Hashtag Boom. Feed Morgan. Hashtag right. Feed Morgan. So now it's time for me to tell you to check out the Frono's Photo, Jared Polin, Daily Fro podcast that's available every night. My phone number is 267-454-6-FRO. You can leave me a voicemail. Let me know what you think about all of this stuff. And I've been playing some voicemails at the end of the show. Steven. It's nobody. <laughs> They're calling in already. It's blown up. Steven, this photo news fix is brought to you by Adultland. Adultland. Yay! Follow Adultland Movie on Instagram, Twitter, and MySpace. I hope Todd's check doesn't bounce. The Daily Fro thing, though. Are you still keeping up with that every night? Yeah, I did nice. like 14 of them so far. Very cool. Uh, before I go to bed, I sit there. And I'm it's like, nice that the day's like over and you can Well, that's just why I chose to do it at the end of the day. Yeah. And I just talk about what I want to talk about. Cool, man. And and I talk about you because you don't listen, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> you know what I really Great. think about, Steven? <laughs> All right. So first up for photo news, Sigma is getting closer to completing their Holy Trinity lineup at of uh, 2.8 he- art Hebrew zooms. Trinity. Holy Trinity. Hebrew. Definitely not Hebrew. Holy. Mm-mm. Uh, with the announcement of their latest art lens, the 1424 F28 DG HSM art lens. Now, Sigma does already have a wide angle zoom, the 12 to 24 F4 art, but it's not as fast as the new 14 to 24. Uh, the new lens is designed for 50 megapixel plus cameras and has nearly zero distortion, according to Sigma. Now, it packs in three FLD glass elements, three SLD glass elements, and three aspherical lens elements, including one 80 millimeter high precision molded glass element. Uh, it's not light, though, as most fast wide angle zooms are. Uh, it weighs in at two and a half pounds, which is a third of a pound heavier than the Nikon 1424. Is it really? It is. Hmm. And it's about the same weight as that heavy-ass Canon 11-24. to But it's an 11-24. to And it's an F4. And it's an F4. Now, this is a 2.8, and it's about the same weight. So I am shocked it's heavier than the Nikon, but it's going to be a big boy. Uh, it'll come in Canon, Nikon, and Sigma mounts as well. Sorry, Sony. You can use that adapter that they have, the MC11 one, for your Sony camera, but focusing might be an issue for stills. Uh, and availability and pricing hasn't been announced just yet, but I'd venture to say it'll come in, I don't know, two grand. 16, 1700. Two grand. Now they're 12 to 24. Well, 1600. It's 1600. Good. Yeah. So with this being a stop, uh, a stop faster, mm. I would say 17 or 1800 probably. So n- the Nikon 14 to 24 was announced when the D3 was announced. Some they announced time the to 24 to 70 and the 14 to 24 at the same exact time so that they would have full frame. Lenses. So for what's it. that? Almost ten years now. Uh, Coming I up bought on? both of them. So D three was what, like two thousand seven, eight, eight, nine, something like that. Oh well, I had my D three S in two thousand and ten. So take it two years before that, two thousand and eight. Yeah, yeah, roughly two thousand and eight. So it's about time for when an that update. came out. It's absolutely about time. The lens is still fantastic, but I actually got rid of my old fourteen to twenty four to get a new copy. Mm. I got it. I got a new copy because I just felt like something was slipping in the other one. And so I dumped it, bought a new one, and it is time for Nikon to r- update the 14 to 24 with a 12 to 24 2.8, yeah, 11 what do you think to 24 f4. I uh, think they'll copy the Canon exactly and make f4, it an 11 though? to 24 f4. Because hmm. at, at mind that it, point, it doesn't matter. At that point, I would, I'd rather have a 12 to 24 2.8. Screw the extra millimeter, even though you do get that almost fisheye look at that point. But still. Now, I, they... The 7200, we're still waiting for Sigma to release the 7200 sport. art lens to sport. complete it wouldn't that be lineup. An art. It would be a sport. Why wouldn't it be an art? Because not, that's not an art. I don't know that they have Zoom art lenses. Yeah, they Is do. Is it they have a 2035? That they call that art also? I believe they call that art too. Yeah, they have a bunch of Zooms. Yeah, I just the think 12 the 7200 is a sport. Yeah. A good one. Like, I don't think they'll call it I art. wouldn't be surprised if they called it a, a 7200 art lens. I'm going to call it a sport lens. Okay. Um, and Canon, I'm waiting for them to update their 7200 because that's been, I don't know, nine years at this point? No. It's no, been a while. It's, it's version two. I think 2010? No, I don't think so. It's, I think it's been about eight years. We should look that up. Yeah, but close. That lens, it's been a while. That lens is great. It's been a while. Yeah, nope, Aaron nope. Lewis. 
that that lens is great. The 7200 2.8 version two uh, from IS is amazing. Yeah, so sharp. But Sigma's getting close, man. So they're getting close to that holy trinity, Hebrew, Hebrew trinity, trinity. Excuse me. Uh, and we'll see what they have next. We have Vision Research. They announced another super slow mo phantom camera called the V2640, uh, capturing 6,600 frames per second. This marks the fastest four megapixel camera ever made that shoots in 2K. Uh, and if you drop down to 1080p at two megapixels, it'll clock in at 11,000 frames per second. It's a lot. Or 480p, you can do 28,000 frames per second. That's wow. very, very fast. Wow. Uh, it shoots well in low-light situations as well with a max native ISO of 16,000 in monochrome and 3,200 in color as the native ISO. It has a very high dynamic range of 64 decibels and the lowest noise floor of any Phantom camera at 7.2e, whatever the hell that means. Uh, and then other specs include a max shutter speed of 142 nanoseconds, up to 288 gigs of memory, That's and a, a 16 gig memory. Ethernet port. Yeah, but I guarantee that 288 gigs of memory is up like that. Yep. Uh, I've and this is actually a, a video of it uh, showing right now of a balloon, water balloon popped with that new camera. Do you know who gets those? Who? Uh, YouTube usually has guys. them at the YouTube space, and the slow mo guys. Slow mo guys are. Pretty much, I feel like what fa made the Phantom cameras like popular. Although they're insanely expensive. We saw them at uh, Hey Jared. It was at CES. Hey, it was NAB. NAB. Yeah. Now this thing will be available in Canon, Nikon, PL, and C mounts. And while no pricing has been announced just yet, it'll probably literally cost like a hundred grand. I bet. Do you know how much uh, the other like ones other, cost? I think they're well over fifty, <sighs> like seventy five, hundred, hundred and twenty five. They're they're up there, man. For the high-end models, especially. We'll have to use one, try one one day. I mean, you need to be like a scientist to operate one of those I don't know what too. we would do in slow-mo, though. Anything. Anything looks cool in slow-mo. Anything? Anything. Todd? Sweat? Oh, whoa. Why Todd. does it always come back to me? I, well, water's always good. You just saw the balloon. Oh, screw Date you, available first you. on on Amazon. January 4th, 2010. Eight years. Me. Who was right? I don't remember. What did I say? You said, no, it's way newer. No, it's way newer. It's still newer. Yeah. It's false. Mm -hmm. sure. Exactly. It's fake news. Uh, the U.S. Navy is getting rid of combat camera units to save money. Now, having only two combat camera units, the Navy says the military photographers will be looking for new jobs starting October 1st. Can I ask you, what is on the bottom of his camera right there? Uh, oof, God, that's a good question. I don't know. That, I think that's a mounted camera. I, that might be like a mount on the helicopter. Oh, really? I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, that could be. Looks badass, though. Uh, like so a let's crappy see. Crappy camera, though. The photographers will be looking for a new job starting October 1st in order to cut costs and eliminate billets, which is like their living quarters. Billets? Billets. The combat camera units are trained to shoot both guns and photos, but mainly to document the Navy for the general public. Now, Navy spokesperson Lieutenant Lauren Chapmas says, due to budget constraints, this difficult decisions were made in order to ensure the resourcing of critical mission areas that support Navy's expeditionary operations. Other expeditionary mission areas took precedence over ComCam. Yeah, I call bullshit on this when you're uh, approving billions of dollars a year to be yeah. wasted on bullshit. That you can't have these people having their jobs to document, which is what they're supposed to do. You tell me you can't pay. They're in the Army. Navy. They're in the Navy. They enlisted. Young men. They getting paid. <laughs> and you can't, you can't get over. Now, and it's not even that many people. Uh, they says they will eliminate four active duty officers, 50 active duty enlisted, and then 31 Reserve enlisted billets. That's like 74 people. <laughs> now, this isn't out of the blue, though. In 2017, combat cameras funding was cut by 60%. Uh, and then later that year, there was an opportunity to preserve the units, both of them, by uh, basically reorganizing into a single Navy unit. But the two parties couldn't agree on terms, so it never happened. Of course they mm. could. And at this point, they just eliminated both sectors. Are you happy now? Are you happy now? And they say the Navy Public Affairs Support Element Command will now cover the photography roles uh, and media roles at the ComCam unit once held. Good so for it's you. It's a shame, but combat camera is no more a thing in the Navy. Uh, the rumor mill has started for the next iteration of the DJI Mavic Pro. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Drone Review and News claims that the Mavic Pro 2 will house a one-inch sensor, which is great. That's all I wanted. Uh, similar to its big brother, the Phantom 4 Pro. 
Now, the report also says we'll see an increase in battery life to 35 minutes of flight time. Let's all hope that we can still use, like, the original DJI Mavic Pro batteries, though. Nope. Since they literally Heck change no. the battery every single release of a new drone. Because uh, how many do we own? Three? Four batteries? Three batteries, I think. How much are they each? I think they're probably 89 bucks a pop. <sighs> Expensive. Batteries. I actually bought that drone. They didn't give me that one. Because what's it? The Phantom 4 Pro batteries? Aren't they, like, 150 each or 125 or? Don't know. They gave me that one. I think they're pretty expensive for those batteries. Uh, they also say we'll see the addition of two rear obstacle avoidance sensors, which is obviously a welcomed upgrade. Uh, this all makes sense after the release of the Mavic Air, which basically took every spec the Mavic Pro had and made it much better. Uh, they now need a model to clearly separate the two, which would be the Mavic Pro 2. Hmm. Now, DRN says we'll see the announcement sometime in March, just next month. And again, as like all, all rumors, don't take this news story as fact. It's simply a rumor. could be totally wrong. But what I want is just a one-inch sensor. Yeah. The DJI one, the Mavic, love it. But I just think the quality of the footage is not great. It makes you think, what are they going to do with the Phantom, the Phantom line? Yeah. I mean, are they going to get to micro four-thirds sensors? Or, oh, yeah. Or Imagine if that was built APS-C. in. APS-C. I mean, that would, they're starting to do that with the real high end with the Zenmuse, Zenmuse and all of that, but mm. we'll see if they actually come to uh, the Phantom 4 Pro. Yeah. But one-inch sensor, it'll be great with at 100, uh, native ISO of 100. Yep. Because it gets real grainy real fast. And then something that's just really freaking cool, I wanted to bring this up. This is the last photo of SpaceX's Starman, which is Elon Musk's red Tesla Roadster and dummy that was sent out to space nope. via the Falcon Heavy launch. Which uh, we watched here, by the way. We watched on this TV. We watched it live. On this very TV. We did, because I was like, guys, this is important. We should all watch this right now. Yes. So that, they just put that car and Spaceman up there? You didn't see it? No. Oh, dude. I was busy. He was busy in L.A. I was so Excuse busy. Me. Excuse me. I'm so super busy. I'm waiting to see if they emailed me back, because I emailed them. Um, we wonder what camera it was. Was it a stills camera? Was it a video? Because they were transmitting both photos and videos back home. After look, the look, look at that. It looks like video to me. Well, you look it at looks that. like a frame of a video, because yeah. it's pretty blocky and choppy. It, but will you look at that. Just look at it. <laughs> um, now, the camera did Would eventually you look die. At that? After about 12 hours sending back this final, well, not this incredible. final, it was the first one we showed. And the car was en route to Mars, this car. But Get your ass to Mars! It overshot and is now on its way to the asteroid belt with David Bowie's Space Oddity on repeat. Now, I wonder how long until the car battery, like the radio, dies? Is it just like a... Maybe they put solar panels Is it a solar panel it? that's just constantly charging it? all Because obviously that would die after like... That's Weak, ridiculous. That. None of us will ever know. And they say the car could be in space for billions of years. It's not really up there. It's crazy. Well, it I looks will say, fake. The I will image say, looks fake. I will say when the launch took off. I'm I mean, like, the Earth is clearly flat, too. You see that? Clearly. Clearly flat. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, just, it just mind-boggling what they are capable of doing. Yeah. And the fact that those bo both those rockets, the side boosters, landed almost at the same time, even though it looked really fake coming in. Super fake. It looks like there. it was just reversed footage. But I, I would like, uh, my goal this year, and I've already set the things in motion, is to see a SpaceX, SpaceX launch. Yeah. I wanted to go for that one, but I wasn't approved yet. It looks super cool. I'm shocked they pulled it off because they had no test mission or test rockets firing off. They I did think test it was just the rocket. Just the rocket, but not with the car inside well, no, they didn't, or the payload. They didn't or test anything. the load. They just shot. They they fired up one of or a couple of the engines and the a couple third days prior. Booster, I think, never made it back. It crashed. It crashed mm. on the drone ship and I think they both did the drone ship sink? Nope. It's still there. They said it missed the drone ship by a by a by a good bit, but the spray and the debris came in at 300 miles came an hour and hit it. And so we're waiting for that footage if they have it. They're yeah, I show wonder it. how the paint will ha handle. Uh, I was curious there. about the paint too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Very cool. It is an amazing photo. And then we got the final story. This is the big story of the week. Yeah, don't run through my images yet, though, Todd. Wait till uh, we what, just have the story images, images for this. Oh yeah, use yeah. the story images. Yep. Peter Lick, me. he's back in the news once again for his most recent photo, which many claim is a photoshopped composite. Question mark? The photo called Moonlit Dreams, which is actually the next photo, Todd, is being sold as limited edition and artist-proof prints. Now, F-Stoppers called out Lick in a 30-minute roundtable discussion amongst fellow photographers where they thoroughly examined Morris. the image. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm Mike Kelly. <laughs> Mike Kelly, yeah. <laughs> um, now, the issue here is that they say he has become extremely wealthy selling prints, and his sale te- sales team swear that they're all real, Did which in this case, sa- it's quite obvious. I mean, they're not pretend, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Do you know their sales team hung up on me on the phone? Really? Yeah, I called. Wow. I called. This is I, the image. I sent an email, and then I'm like, I'm curious about Moonlit Dreams. Uh, and then I call and I ask a question and she puts me on hold and two minutes later still didn't pick it back up. And so I called right back, went to voicemail. There's basically no response yet from Peter Lick's team, which he doesn't even need to. He doesn't we'll need to No, that. Yeah. Now, in this case, clearly it's a manipulated composite image. F stoppers writes allegedly, th- allegedly, but it is. We uh, imagine that they will say that this is to a single unaltered frame. Now, the main giveaway here is the fact that some of the clouds in the photo appear to be behind the moon, which is essentially impossible. Now, in the video, the panel also discusses how the dynamic range, depth of field, and lighting would not be possible in this specific photo. They also note in this image how the moon is the exact same position with the same lighting and clarity in another lick photo called Bella Luna, which is the one you see to the right. Uh, which makes the claim that this is a composite that much more real. It's very difficult, mm. though, to capture the same face of the moon multiple times due to the moon's movements relative to Earth. Now, photographer Steve Cohen writes over at F-Stoppers, the odds of this happening by chance are po- probably something like winning the lottery, getting hit by lightning, and solving global warning, warming all in the same day. Planning for such an alignment would also be next to impossible. So my question is, what do you think? Do you think it's a composite? Do you think it's real? Does it really matter because he's not a photojournalist and he's not morally obligated to have a real image? Yeah, that's my statement that I, that I came up with. That it doesn't matter. Yeah, are we going into that now? Are you uh, done with I that? I think we pretty much can. Now, my other thing is the moon almost looks like a CGI rendering, too. I can't even tell if that's a real photograph. If it is, it's a great photograph of the moon. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, but I, it, I just don't know, understand how you get the moon and that foreground rock element oh uh, well, it's simple Todd. Well, 12,800 a, a giant just... giant telephoto lens for some serious compression yeah, yeah. I, I serious don't... compression and it must be you should do a video behind the scenes and do it again well right if he had yeah. a video from behind the scenes it would have been great yeah. to, to see but that thing must move fa- so fast when you're with a telephoto lens like that so oh, yeah. as you can see with the title it talks about why photographers hate peter lick and this is this is what i, I want to talk about uh i i don't hate peter lick i don't give a crap about what he does with his images if he manipulates them or doesn't manipulate them. Now, I do understand that they do tell people that they are single images and uh, straight out of camera, cool. But at the end of the day, I think the reason most photographers hate Peter Lick is because they ain't Peter Lick. <laughs> they envy him, if they, anything. They, they, they hate the fact that the guy is making... Six point five, reportedly six point five million dollars to sell this lovely image. The most expensive single print ever sold. The guy is a master at marketing and advertising and branding. He's got and a whole promotion. sales team. I hate photographers like that. And <laughs> and so I get why people hate him, and I get the point that stuff looks manipulated and may be manipulated. But at the end of the day, as Stephen brought up, is that he is under no obligation to hold, uphold any journalistic standards. He only needs the answer to himself. And if his people, and by people I mean people are buying his images, because if you've ever been to one of his stores, he's got stores in all of these areas oh, right wow. now. He's got a ton of stores. Go back, Todd. Go back, please, to the stores. Wow, he's that's got that thir- many stores. 13 stores. And I've been to wow. one of those in, in, in Colorado. They are beautiful. The prints are beautiful. Go to the next one, please. Mm-hmm. And on the next frame, you can see on his website, he's got it split up amongst different photos that he offers. Uh, skies, they got color. You could split it up by color. He's mainly a landscape photographer, right? Uh, I would call him straight up a landscape photographer. Okay. That's what or I manipulator. Whatever. Photoshopper. Go to the next one for me, please. And then this is the... <laughs> The this where different he, places that he shot. He took photos mm. of, gotcha. But you can click on it and see the images that he's captured in these locations. Oh, and, he hasn't come to Philly. And purchased them. So on one of the next screens, I should have something that shows what... Um, Filter yeah, by keep color. Keep going past this. That's all the color ones. And then this is a book for $2,950. Uh, it's like... It's like... 580 <laughs> pages, and it goes through his images, and it's huge because I believe it's 40 inches wide when it's open, which is probably a beautiful book that if you're a big fan of Peter Lick, <sighs> then it would probably be a great thing for you to have if you're a fan of his stuff. I love photo books. I'm not spending three grand on this book, but... Equation of time. Let's, let's, 
let's look at some of his photos. Let's well, he's got another photo these. book too. Misty. It looks like, or no, this is a print. Wow, this is a print that goes for 4, what forty three hundred bucks, forty three fifty. It's fine, and that's it, essentially on the more affordable side of his prints. Yeah, this is this is fine. <laughs> Nothing's but that's one I like this. Great it looks, photo. It looks like one of those photos that the guy on the street in New York uses oh my God. in spray you know paint. It almost looks like this is that's the ledge from the moon photo. It almost yeah, looks like those that's are conifers. The ledge. Those are pine trees. Mm. Yeah, that's, I'm just saying it's similar. Very Steven, similar. You, should, you, better Steven, call. you should sell your Eggles bridge uh, photos. I know he they hasn't look like been this. to Philly yet, so yeah. I can sell them that. You better composite it next. <laughs> Put another next, bridge in. Let's put the giant moon behind it all. <laughs> but that moon's green as well. Uh, next. River Moods. This River one Moods. I, that looks like a painting. That's my Spotify playlist I listen to. That, that's, River it, Moods. Is that a picture? Yeah, it, it says it's a picture, but you know how did, like, the processing that's done on that is absolutely insane. You could just I mean, tell how processed like, yeah. it is. I threw like the sketch Instagram filter on it or something right. like that. And that could because even if you look, go go get off, get that off the screen real Todd, fast. Todd, what Dang are you it. doing? Dang this, it! If you look in the bottom corner of the image, wow, it just looks really, really bad. Like All the right. line right there. You now mean? let's see yeah. the next one. The next one's where I I kind of I went through a lot of the photos, and this is just absolute atrocious. Processing. It looks like my HDR from 2009. This is like, <laughs> hey guys, I just got HDR dreams, and now I'm gonna make this image HDR. It's when HDR was like the shit. Everyone was just over processing it. That's Morgan's Instagram feed right there. This is terrible. <laughs> this is a terrible photo and terrible processing. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But if somebody buys this because they see it as beautiful and he makes money at it, then that's their choice. Next one, it's Todd. only four grand. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, I love the composition on this, but yeah. hate the processing. Like this is this is three year old processing. But I, I also wonder though, when was this taken? Doesn't matter. It's on his website and it's off. Crush the lax, sure. pump the yeah. contrast, done. <laughs> that's, that's contrast ex- to a million. That's boom. exactly what I do. What are people are people talking about this in there, Todd? Yeah. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, okay. What, uh, <laughs> Let, let's go to the next one also because we're almost done with this lick story. This is that's uh, pretty. It's pretty. But when you look at it, you're like, how do the... Well, you look at that. Would it's like you those, look at that? Those sunflowers do not look real. Yeah. Well, I don't understand how they're so well lit all the way down to the stems and leaves and the sun's like <laughs> setting behind that's it. That's massive process. That's massive yeah. fill light. That's yeah. definitely added. a lot of focus. Shadows. And, but that's also landscape photographers. That's what they do. So yeah. I can't really... But when I see landscapes, they don't look this fake. No, this is a little overdone. This, but one's, this one's over the top. The next one I'd love... I that's love nice. it. Oh, yeah, I wonder nice. why. I love purple. purple. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see where the light's flooding evenly from where it looks like the light source. I is. like that one. Yeah, it is yeah. beautiful. That's see, a great image. I like image. that one. Thir- no, it's only 39 That one looks legit. Buy it for the factory. Nice metal print of it. Why don't I just print it myself? <laughs> or just print it yourself. <laughs> he does have a lot of high-res images on his website, which you can like zoom in and stuff, too. Is there any? Are there any more, Todd? Nope, that's that was it. it. So, here, here. At, like I said, at the end of the day, you can hate him as much as you want. You don't have to like his stuff, but I know some people are like, well, you're just giving him more promotion when you, pr- when you talk about this stuff. I'm not giving him into pr- promotion to anybody that's going to buy his stuff. Yeah. Photographers aren't going to buy his stuff. The people that buy his stuff, I don't even know who they are, but obviously he's in business because he's employing a ton of people and he's traveling the world and he's taking photos and he's marketing and branding himself to the point where he's made a half a billion, reportedly a half a billion dollars. Wow. Since like in, in 2014 or something is when they said he's brought generated a half a billion dollars in sales. If you can get it, awesome. Kudos. More power to yeah. him. Yeah. The only thing that I would say is, look, he doesn't have to prove to anybody anything. No. He doesn't have to prove it, but if it was one image, the moon photo, then show the raw file. Granted, I, or, I or love the negative. I, I love the image. I really do. It, it's a beautiful image. It's just you can't say that it's one single image. Especially with the clouds going behind the moon. That's the biggest That's issue the that weird I have. Part. But it's still a beautiful yeah. photo. I mean, it's like you know, <laughs> it's like it do you want to you know build your own PC for fifteen hundred dollars or buy an eight thousand dollar Mac? Yeah, it's just you know, the same thing. Todd. Same exact thing. Exactly. And the last, not the la- another thing. Look at Ansel Adams, and if you look at how much manipulation he did in the dark room, would you consider 
that to be similar to what Peter has done. I know it's not digital, but if you look at all of the contact, not the contact sheets, but like sample prints where he paint, he drew, he's like, this is going to be burned in for 43 seconds. This is going to be dodged for 12. And the, how much manipulation was done there, do you, and that he's considered to be one of the greatest landscape photographers of all time. I mean, it's also the same as my Philly shot, the skyline. I did a shit ton of editing to yeah. it. I didn't take five minutes to edit All that it. matters is somebody think you it's awesome it. to put on their wall. And will they pay the that's price? That's all that matters is the yeah, final end product, really. And, and and that's why I think people hate Peter. Photographers hate Peter Lick is because they're not him. Yep. And they're not making multiple millions of dollars off of images. Uh, well, you're making $10 from Colton Newkirk, who's just sent a super chat. Um, and it's for Steven, though. Steven, you look like you got a little too much sun, bro. Here, buy some sunscreen. Son, so, yeah. Apparently, he thinks. Apparently, thinks you maybe you got a little burnt. You may have gotten burnt yesterday. You know what? I actually felt when I got home. I do well, I look red? Well, yeah, because I didn't want to say anything to you. I was standing behind you when the parade was going by. When the when the floats were coming, yeah. The sun was directly. It was over here, and I could feel it burning my face. Which because when I got home, I did feel like I did get a little burned. But you today, look, I felt fine. I mean, Usually, look, I can feel it. You look like you're uh, like you got your hand caught in the cookie jar. <laughs> I mean, I have red, pasty skin anyway. I mean, if you just freaking look at my hand, it just gets red. <laughs> so that's just the nature of my skin. Uh, Maybe I got burnt. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Great question, though. Great question. Yeah. Well, that's $10. So question. that'll that'll go to a lot of sunscreen. I'll take that $10. And yeah. that <laughs> is photo news. Nice. Now let's move on to gear of the week. Yeah. Hold on. Let me get it. <laughs> Best gear of the week. Wait for it. Eight thousand dollar paperweight. Careful! Oh, psh. my bad. You really don't have to be careful anymore. It's just the baby's getting black sent on black back. on black on black. Space gray, black on black. There, there it is. There it is. Can we not show Todd? Because nobody cares. Can I touch the screen now? No, <laughs> it's not a touch screen. It still has to go back. It's already in the box. water damaged. We're gonna still send it back. Shut up, Todd. <laughs> this is the iMac Pro. This is what it looks like. This is what a fourteen core computer looks like. I'll turn it on so we can see like. what it looks like. What do you say? Turn it on so we can see what it looks Steven. like. Steven! No, the power cord actually isn't even on. Oh, my God. But uh, like I said, we connected it to the BenQ today, and it works fine with heavy. it connected to an external monitor Your source. Your little bird arms are going to break. Ugh. I'm still careful even though it has to go Jared's back. trying to carefully place it as it's broken and getting sent back. Yeah, but I, I, I don't care. I still respect the of stuff. Of course. You don't want to break I don't, it more. I don't, I, don't, I don't like... I'm sure they're going to just switch out the video card or They'll, th This will be coming to a refurb store near yeah, you. Somebody's yeah. getting that. So that was Gear of the Week. Now it's time to get into the Flying Solo, Todd. Yes. <laughs> live Q&A. Let's get into some of the live Q&A or questions that you've picked from today. Yep. If everybody's watching live, they should jump in and ask their questions now. We've had some previous people ask questions uh, before, the, before now. And uh, uh, Green Grudge... Ask, do you think it's better to become proficient with one lens for a lot of different tasks or get a whole variety of lenses for different things? It's a pretty good question. Uh, I mean, you don't use one ring to rule them all. No. Yeah, but you could, get, you could get like something that does a lot. Like I mean, a like a 24 to 105 or, or something. Yeah, exactly. My, my whole mentality all lens. for lenses has always been if you're shooting full frame, a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200, will cover you for everything. just about everything. Essentially. If you're shooting crop sensors, a 17 to 50 2.8 from Sigma or Tamron and a 70 to 200 2.8 or F4 or something of that ilk will cover you ilk. for a long time. Ilk. I don't think that you should just get a 35 millimeter and use it for everything because there are different lenses that are better for this than they're better for that. But if you do have one lens, there's no reason you can't be really proficient with it. And at the same time, if you're shooting with a, a wide prime, like a 14 millimeter, you can't just simply move your feet because the distortion is still going to switch up the way your image looks. I'm a big fan of, like you said, though, the Trinity. Yes, Hebrew yeah. Trinity. Holy Trinity. Uh, Daniel Gonzalez asks, uh, I need a microphone to video f photograph my friend's wedding. What do you recommend under $200? I would say like a Rode Video Mic Pro. It's not under $200. Well, the Pro may be $199. Right? Or, or get, oh, get yeah, an older model. The Pro model. Plus is $300, I think. I'd spend $300 and get the Pro Plus. This is for what, Todd? For weddings? It's a wedding, but see, that's the thing. Actually, or you get yeah, some but if kind of wireless mic. Uh, for weddings, I mean, if you're 50 feet back and you're recording You're almost better off hiding like a... I, I would uh, lav them up. Hi, or, or hide one of those... Uh, what, do, what do you use that you record directly into the... Um, the zoom, the little zoom. The I, zoom I would quarter. get that and hide that up up front somewhere, or even put put a lav like just one lav on the preacher, 
and try to get everybody. Dear we beloved. If you if you're if you're if your um, resources are limited. I would say. Yeah, I would. Think, yeah, I would do because, exactly that. And you, you can even th- go the wired route too, and and wire him up and put a zoom like in his pocket. Yeah, yeah even yeah. the H one or right into a phone. Because you have right to, into a phone. Yeah, you have to think that for weddings, you're not recording the dance music. Road video mic pro for weddings is an odd, like a shotgun mic is an odd choice. Yeah, for weddings, you wouldn't you want to. Be, yeah, if if you're shooting from back of the back of the room. Yeah, you need the you're, source. All you're getting is the room. You need the the actual microphone yeah. they're recording with. Blab them up, do something. But yeah, it's and a lot of times I've noticed that. when I'm at weddings, the the pastors, preachers, priests, whoever, they they usually have some of them have sound in house and they wear a mic so everybody can hear them and just get a feed of yep. that. Usually they'll have a board in the back or some kind of system where you can directly plug in and yep. get the get, audio. Get, get even if they record the feed from there and then you just shoot scratch. And then sync it up later. And, and if they do have that internal system throughout the, you know, speakers throughout the entire church or whatever it is, Jesus? you could, if they're not oh, too you? high, oh. I've actually seen someone put like a zoom on a light stand and put it all the way up next to the speaker. That's always a thing you could do as well, as long as you have like a low cut filter or something on it, but it should be fine. There's nice. so many different things you can do. What else we got, Todd? How many people we have listening up in that group? Right now, uh, we have 750. Uh, nice. I got to uh, Cameron Borders, $3. $3. Yo, yo, yo. If you'd like to do a super chat, it helps with lunch sometimes. Uh, DMAC asks, Todd, are you guys going to WPPI? Well, is, is that my question to answer, Stephen? Yeah, I would answer that. Because I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, I think we are there for one day. Yeah, I think we're there short day at WPPI for one Monday. We are officially signed up for it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Registered. Scott Heath got us registered. Scott Heath. Hey guys. Hey, hey guys. Scott Heath. I need you to register. I'll take care of the rest. (laughs) Guys. Love his voice. Hey guys. Good dude. Let's go to Ray's. Roy's. (laughs) Roy's. <laughs> Roy's. It was Roy's. Whatever it was. Really good restaurant out west. I loved Roy's, man. Yeah. It's one of those chains that is freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Um, Eddie Jones has a question. Do you think that there is any point in a beginner photographer for a be- beginner photographer to use film cameras to help him understand the basics more? So, hmm. I mean, it's a great challenge, but if you really want to, if you don't want to invest in buying a film camera and then go shoot film and be called a hipster when you go to the store to get it processed, Jared. take your digital camera, cover up the back of the screen, just put a just put a baseball card on the back of it or a three by five card, cut it oh. up, tape it to the back, challenge yourself to shoot. No more than 36 or 24 photos and use your light meter. That, that's a digital camera. And you can stick to one ISO. And it should only be 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, and that's it. Yeah. You want to replicate what it's like to shoot film? Do that. Now, are they trying to replicate the actual process of getting it developed as well or just simply shooting with film? I'm just saying if you want to just shoot like you're shooting with film or you want to get the feeling of the challenge – and not have to wait to get your film back like we did as kids. What's what's the one like a camera that like doesn't have a digital screen or anything? It's essentially like shooting like film. Isn't there a like? You mean a the Relonk? No, not the Relonk. <laughs> no, not the ninety nine dollar one you can rent or whatever. There's I'm pretty sure a like a camera that is very similar to shooting film, but it's digital and shoots like digital DNGs oh, inside. And I don't remember have a, which version it was. Yeah, it was some kind of camera where it was it was meant to mimic shooting film. Yeah. I- well, Christian Sweden gave us 50 seeks. What is that? Swedish Kronen or something yeah, like that? Yeah, Kron- Kronauers. No yeah. Yeah, Kronauers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He asked, do you guys think we'll be seeing a D5S before yeah. the Summer Olympics in 2020? Well, yeah. That's this, a specific it's question. Gotta be. So the funny yeah. thing is, I said to, I, I said said to Steven yesterday yeah. when I was sta- we were standing at the parade, I'm like, we're due for a D5S in 2018, which means by 2020, you're going to be due for a D6. Because okay. every two years. two years at this point, they're replacing almost two years to the day going to the 5S. I think you're by 2020 Olympics, you're getting a six. No doubt about it. Okay. I still wish that Canon would follow that route and do every two years because they basically refine, they refine the it. version. It's not, it's not really anything new. It's just refined. No, but I had a D2H. I never got the D2HS because that just n- didn't make any sense. It didn't what do much. What was the S version? 
sport. The S didn't do very like much. Like fast frame rate or it something? It didn't cha- Well, yeah, because it did eight frames a second, but it didn't. It was still 4.1 megapixels. It was still not full frame, and it was late. Okay. But then you had your D3, your D3S, your D, D2X, it started, D2XS. It really. yeah. um, no, but they had a D4. Uh, they didn't have a D4S, but there was an N90 and an N90S. There was also a D70 and a D70S. But wait, wait, they didn't have a D4S? I don't recall if they had a D4. They didn't have a D5S. They had a D5. Sorry. F4. Oh, okay. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm thinking they, I'm talking film. Gotcha, so there was gotcha. an F5, okay. and there was an, then film, there was an N90 and an N90S. Mm. But there was no uh, F5S. You have that N90 box, I think, downstairs. With the the uh, N90 box is downstairs, and the set. N90S is on my door at home. Oh, and yeah. That's my peephole. Ca- my peephole camera. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. What else you got, Todd? Michael Kiddix wants to know what tips do we have for shooting 4K on the 5D Mark IV? I have a lot of cards. Steven, take this one. uh, Todd actually shoots more video than me on the 5D Mark IV. Well, big big cards are nice. Big cards are nice. And you're going to also want to make sure you've got a wide lens in your arsenal because that crop factor will bite you in the behind. Uh, I mean, it's almost like you're shooting... APS-C at that point yes. with full frame lenses. You have to exactly. think about that crop factor. Now, what I, the big tip that I had for Todd, at least when he started, was the SD card. The SD card slot is actually faster than the CF slot if you use a UHS-2 card, which they don't recommend, but it works. So it actually will give you 30 minutes full record time on an SD card without stopping. Now, if you don't have a fast CF card, it'll just stop every like yeah. two minutes. And what do you get, 16 minutes of record time? Uh, out of 16 a, minutes out of a 64 on a gig, right? 64 gig card or... Yeah, I think so. When yeah. we did that real-world review across the street, Dan was chugging away at backing that stuff that up. That 5D Mark IV review is two terabytes that we shot, and that was uh, our usual shooting, which we maybe have like 200 gigs by the end of the day. That's insane. It was yeah, it's terrible. two terabytes. We went through like 15 cards, because again, you only get 16 minutes, but we had to shoot in 4K. By the way, 50 Seek is $6.17. I saw that. Nice. Thank you very much. Yes, Yeah, I, I mean, and with the 4K stuff, I... The only reason I shoot 4K is to get two angles, two and, angles. And, and edit in 1080. For and that's the most what makes part. the the D850 so great is the full frame 4K, though the autofocus sucks. I will say uh, I think the D850 has the sharpest full frame 4K too. The Sony like A7R3 seemed a little soft for me full frame. Now Super 35 mode, it's great, but yeah. the D850 and the 5D Mark IV though is still really sharp. 5D it's Mark IV great. is a, it's a very good camera. Yeah. We just wish that it wasn't so. That should have been like the 5D Mark III. The other thing, too, I like about the SD card slot, if you use that SD card, the UHS-2 card, it will make your, uh, it turns into an XFAT file system if you use 64 gigs or higher. So you get one continuous giant file instead of every four minutes chopped up clips. Oh, that's good. Mm. Because if you're using FAT32 system, which is normal on cameras, it's every four gigs it cuts the <laughs> file. And then you end up having 50 <laughs> cut up files you walk that home with. That was the with, Fat Boys. Mess. Did oh. you? Did you get... <laughs> that's not that, the, I don't know what that is. <laughs> that was a great movie when the Fat Boys, that Fat Boys movie. Disorderlies. Yeah, great movie. I got nothing. Uh, Key Rat Mocha threw us five dollars and has a question: What do you think about the Canon One D Mark IV in twenty eighteen? One D Mark Ancient. IV. That's before, that the, before 1DX. the One DX in two thousand ten. I think. I mean, buy a five D Mark IV, probably the same price. Uh, I'd say 1DX Mark IV at this point is probably more like 1500 bucks. Oh, really? Cheap. I mean, it's a eight year old camera, 10 year old camera. It was, but it was. It's about 10 years probably at this a, point. It was good. It They got hurt when the one before that was panned with that whole mirror box issue. Yeah. They were good cameras. People love those things. I don't know the price. If I knew the price of it, I could give well, you more feedback. What I liked about the One DX is that they stopped doing the H version. You know, they stopped doing the uh, oh the One DS APS H version. Oh, the one point three. Yeah, the one point three crop factor, and they went just full frame and finally went back to that. Yeah, as the native sensor. So yeah, I, yeah. I would say get a five D four or something. Yeah, now, 5D4. if you need the high frame rate, though, get original One DX. Yeah, we got a couple mm. time for a couple more, Todd. Yeah, uh, Tim Burhill, Jeff Hodgson, uh, gave us five pounds, which is like three thousand dollars. Boom. Uh, what is your preference regarding the horizon in a photo? Always level, or may it also be off a little bit now, to contribute to the photo. Jared's a now, when you on mean this one. off, as in, as in, as in, like you're shooting that or way, or do you mean or depends? I guess. 
Or does if he it mean, helps with the photo being not level? I think he, he said. I, I think he's saying if it's not level, but because it, it contributes to the photo, is that okay? The way the way that I hear this is, I, I'm wondering if he means is the horizon lower oh. or is it Dutch angled? I was thinking Dutch angle is what he was. No, if it's Dutch angled, go go uh, pound pound yourself. sand. Uh, get rid of it. So, for example, like if I if I am off even by like just a degree, I will still. If I can see it, that out in post. For whatever reason, I was telling you this. Stephen didn't understand this through my text message the other day. <laughs> it's so hard to decipher your text. Messages. I was saying that I see composition. Like I have a thing for seeing composition. I can see when things are off, and I can see when the lines are off. It's weird. It's weird, but I have a way of seeing this stuff, and I can tell. And I don't use the in camera levels at all because they I don't, actually do they don't help i think they're off i eye it up i look at it and make sure i'm good uh and i think that has worked better for me but I, yeah if 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 it's cockeyed you better correct that after the fact or try to get it as straight in camera as possible there's certain images you just don't want to see bendy or especially uh dutch angles dutch angles make me want to throw up i That's the beauty yeah. of 4k straight well. lines all day that's the sure. beauty of 4k being able to yep yep Fix it up a little bit. Video. I mean, uh, if you're doing video, though, you should have that straight because you have time to get your camera ready. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're shooting landscapes, landscapes, if the if you're shooting you landscapes, should have that ready. you better get it straight in camera because yep. you're on a freaking Especially tripod. Especially before you start like post Photoshopping it and selling it for three thousand dollars. <laughs> and putting so fake the next in there. question I have is Glitch Life gave us two dollars, and he wants to know T7i best lens I can get. A lot of to questions. amateur shoot weddings. So. You know, it's a T7i. What's a good lens to get him in the in the wedding business? Well, a lot of it. Does he have no lens? Would be with budget. <laughs> like I said earlier, let's seven, assume he's got. Let's assume he's got a kit. I got to assume he's got nothing. Seventeen to fifty, two point eight. If you're going to save money on that T7i, uh, does Canon have a seventeen to fifty? No, but Sigma does and Tamron does. Okay, mm. and then a seventy to two hundred. That's my answer to everything. Seriously, for anybody starting out, is a wide angle zoom and a seventy to two hundred. Now, if yeah. you really say you can't afford that, then you could get something like, shit. I was gonna say like a twenty four to one hundred four, one hundred five, but that's that's for full frame. Um, It'd be a little too tight for yeah crop sensor. And I know that that, that Sigma they make some ultra wide lenses. Tamron and Tokina make some ten to twenty fours and things along those lines. But if you're shooting professionally and you're going to need a 2.8, 17 to 50, and then 70 to 200. And I'd say if, if you still have a little leeway with some change, maybe get like a 51.4 or something more of a budget prime yeah. that's more like an 85 on right. the crop. But you can also, and I'm not saying you need to go spend $1,900 on that 10-year-old 70 to 200, 2.8 version 3 or 2. I'm saying you could look at the Tamron G2 for 1300 bucks. It's a pretty solid investment right there yeah. that's going to maintain it. You, you, you will sell that for 900 bucks in three years and still come out with a lot of cash when you sell that. I assume they're not going to buy a lens like that, though, if you have a T7i body. Then, if, then you don't have the right tools for the job to do the weddings. Yeah, it's going to be better a slow rent build. The stuff. Yeah, I, renting. Because I'm not going to beat around the bush. Yeah, rental's answer, I think. I'm not beating around the bush and telling you that you can get away with doing it on the cheap with some crappy glass. I'm just... No, I mean, you, the reality you can't is, shoot a video but, guide with the kit lens. It's just not say, you, you could do it, but oh, absolutely, you can do it. I'm not, not saying you can't, but if it's your job, then you better go rent the lens and, and, and get familiar with something. Because if you're in a super dark situation, what are you going to do with your T7i and you've got an 18 to 55 on there? And please do not use that pop-up flash. Exactly. That's all I got to say. Daniel also says uh, um, he's not charging. It's his best friend's wedding, so he's, uh, he's don't just trying to help it. out. Don't shoot your best friend's wedding. Well, oh, if they're not no. going to have a photographer at all, though. If they're not going to have a photographer at all, what I would suggest. Would here's what I suggest you do. Make pretend you're just going to the wedding just to attend it. Right. And then when the wedding photographer doesn't show up, you grab your camera out right, of the car. Right, right, we, we didn't flip to Dan's camera yeah, angle. Dan one. hasn't yeah, switched at all. Dan, Dan let's get your camera angle. There's no Dan Dan's cam. photographer was amazing, by the way. Because Dan's photographer didn't even show up. I have video of that, by the way, of Jared, Jared shooting that. What what's going on? He's and, you know he's trying to figure out. His it's not working. Yeah. Struggle City. No, it's working. And Dan's just there. He forever. is. Yeah, Dan, there we go. Dan's wedding photographer. So before Dan's wedding, I call Todd and say, oh, "Should I lower third too? Look should I that. bring my camera to the wedding just in case?" Todd's like, "No, no, don't no. bring it." 
Don't no. bring your camera. It's 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 Dan's <laughs> wedding. Don't bring it. I'm editing right now. I'm I, live streaming. I edit. I ended up having to take the videographer 6D. Which at least it was a nice full frame. It was, but he had it set so weird. But I was still able to get him some good shots. And I used Save the the, day, man. the DXO Mark One to shoot from my seat while sitting next to Jean, Todd's wife, making her laugh the whole time. Yeah, sure. sure. She's Whatever. probably laughing at you. She was like, can we please get out of here? I'm so tired of him. Uh, uh, Matt Cohen asked, uh, he threw us $5. He just had the statement that the 7200 G2, great results, that he got great results with. Nice. It. So maybe I think that helps out the other guy. And I think finally, uh, our friend, our buddy, One Eye Blind Media, will we get a new Raw Talk soon? A re- real talk soon. Oh. And I think Jared... Jared is going away. Is he at some going point. away at some point here soon? Doing uh, a vacay or something? March, or? Maybe. Well, I'm going away at the end of March to Paris. So I think that might be uh, real. If I'm around, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, I gotta if go I'm to around, Finland. we'll do it. Well, Todd may not be around. I might either. be gone. Oh, Todd might be gone too. Well, I we literally after these these meetings, I I had to actually lock in very much uh, solidified dates a little more. So. Really? Ah. Right. Okay. So who are we gonna get to fill in Todd's chair? Oof. Oh, is that why Dan's? Well, who's going to switch? No, Dan's Jeez, not taking that. I have no idea. I didn't even think no, about it. Why don't no, we call no, it's Joe? Gonna happen. Dan's going to have to do more work now. He's going to have to show the stuff you guys are talking no, about. There's why no don't we way. Just call you can't Joe? switch and do all that at the same time. I bet you Joe would come out. I mean, why don't we call Joe's sister? Joe's dad. Why don't we have Joe's dad come out and do it? It could be like Phil and Artie's chair. That's tough. Crap. Anyway, so how many how many are we finishing up with in there? Because we got seven seventeen. We held on pretty well. Nice. So and, I want to thank. Um, yeah, we got a lot of uh, people like the Dan Cam hashtag Dan Cam. Dan people Cam. like that. Nice twelve um, millimeter Rokinon right there. I want to thank everybody for tuning in live for jumping in and being yeah. a part of it. Because by being a part of it, you are getting to see it raw and and unedited oh, I well, and unfiltered. There. I see what it's you did there. Still raw and unedited and unfiltered, even after. That, that's true. As long as it stays up. Yeah. But no, you get to interact, and that's the that's fun the of it, is thing. that you get to be here for that. Yep. Yeah. So I suggest that you please subscribe to the podcast. Go to fronosphoto.com slash podcast. That way you could check out the Daily Froze, which I do every single night. And then Fridays, you can listen to Raw Talk or pick it up on Monday or go back and listen to all the other episodes that you may have missed at any point along the line. And Stephen, anything you want to add before we leave? That's it, man. That's it. That's it. Todd, you want to add anything? No, nope, I think that's it. I think I'm good. Thanks for – that was a lot of people watching. It was, it was good, good, uh, good comments and good interaction. We hope you enjoyed the quality of the stream. We, do, we take the utmost in <laughs> care a lot of time. in trying to make it one of the best-looking live shows that you've ever seen on the Internet from a, a small organization. Yeah. It looks better than some of the bigger productions that we've seen from actual news stations, and that is a – testament to steven i I do want to comment about uh, us shooting at the eagles parade yesterday everyone thought we were like part of cnn or the local news (laughs) who are you with (laughs) show us your you're on the news (laughs) and jared did i'm sure i'm sure jared did. we're running around with like a camcorder what are you talking about a good camcorder it's 4k but everybody's like nice you know then you get those girls i i wish the footage would have worked because i had a girl vaping at the camera some basic bitch so you'll have (laughs) what what steven what some basic bitch what don't talk about dan like that really this is why we have no female watchers that's what i'm saying see i thought we were cutting out the nonsense steven but there are basic there were basic guys dicks bros bros, everywhere everywhere oh i'm sure dick dick nick (laughs) jeez all right let's let's get out of here yeah let's do it thank you guys very much for watching uh what was i gonna say there's some other videos check out all the videos on the channel that's it dan cut to me please thank you that's it Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. To check out the last Raw Talk, go ahead and click on the screen right over, over by Steven's head that you can't see. To <laughs> click on for more Frono's photo videos, click over here. Please subscribe click by clicking me. my face. Click yeah. it. On my click face. It. Everybody's my face. clicking it. Do it on my face. Ooh. Click it. Three, click two, it. one. We're out.